Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee, and it is my pleasure to be in conversation with my next guest, an educator and talented ceramic artist whose work is a reflection of her unique cultural experiences. She is the founder of Heo Ceramics in Philadelphia, and her artistry has been showcased both nationally and internationally, cementing her place as a notable figure in the contemporary ceramic scene. Please welcome Heather Austin Chapman. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. And um, as we, we get started, uh, I like to do these sort of kind of in- interview questions, uh, like like introductory questions in this sort of interview. Um, and the first one, I'd like to really get to sort of the root, the the origin story of one's creativity. So mm-hmm. could you start by telling us about your background and how did you first get involved with the arts and with ceramics? Yeah, so this is a a really fun one. I feel like um, people want to know a lot of times, like, how did you get into ceramics? Because if if anybody meets me, like, it's I just love it. I think it's it's the best thing. Um, so I was thinking about this, like, why am I so interested in this material? And I think the origin really comes from. Um, my dad was in the Air Force, and so I was born actually in the Philippines. And then we lived in England and then we did move to the United States. But um, for that matter, we always had a variety of objects in the house made of ceramics. So teapots or bowls and things like from all over, um, in addition to like with the furniture and, and decorative things that just were always around. And I think that really spurred my interest in the material and um you know, just going outside and playing with kids and like just digging in the dirt, like literally. Um, but after, you know, like get a little bit older, um, I had some really great teachers pretty early on. And I think that made a huge impact on me. You know, even in middle school, we were really lucky to have an arts program and teachers that like stayed after and were like, Hey, if you want to play around on the wheel, it's here. You know, we can't teach it in class, but if you want to take some time to do it. So yeah, just kind of like figuring out, like, I really like these things. Like, why do I like these things? And then just having the opportunity to play around with the material. Yeah. I think it's something, and thank you. And I think it's something important about being able to have that space to play to have that space to sort of experiment you never know what you could be into unless you're kind of exposed to it um and you know like this you know i am self-taught in doing sort of audio production and things of that nature I went to school for business i know how to do spreadsheets you know? <laughs> and you know being able to have sort of the the, the the money and the access to figure out, all right, let me invest in this just because I'm curious about it. There are some right. things that I have in the studio right now that I don't use that are really cool and it seemed really cool at the time, but they don't fit into this sort of configuration. So having the opportunity to play and figure things out, whether it be with, you know, sort of materials um, or whether it be with gear, but having sort of that opportunity to play is I think important, especially when you're developing and you're growing up. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I, I feel like there's a, as an educator, there's a lot of studies, you know, where they speak to that point of being exposed to it. And also, you know, the stakes aren't that high really i mean they are in the world but when you're allowing yourself to experiment you you can't put so much pressure like you've got to find these little nuggets of time where you can explore and play and then you know as an adult if you can squeeze a few of those minutes in here and there um i think that it's really valuable time spent yeah, we we start to run out of that time to be able to to mess around and play because it's like get to work get these things done yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I find that I do that on occasion. But yeah, I, it, you're right. You're 100% the one. So I, I see 
you know, sort of this international like background and doing sort of the research there for you, um, you know, that you've uh, taken it, you, your travels have taken you to various parts of the world, including Asia, Central America, Europe, and here in the U.S. Um, how have these experiences like shaped your your style and your artistic approach to like ceramics or your perspective as an educator? Well, um, I think that travel is a humbling thing and also you know it just gives you so much more insight to understand that the world is a vast place uh who knew everything that they kept telling us was true but you know as a kid uh i mean i came to the united states relatively young and i am technically american just born abroad but those early impressions really um always made me feel like I wanted to travel and explore. So I never really felt like, oh, I'm from New Jersey, even though technically, I mean, I still love it. Don't get me wrong, but um, I always wanted to travel. So anytime I had like saved money, I would, I would go somewhere. And because of, you know, having teachers that had so much knowledge about ceramics and then doing a short dive and understanding like, oh my gosh, like ceramics is literally everywhere every culture has a history. And so to me, it just seemed like, oh, this material has a story to tell and yeah. people are still working with it around the world. So I can reach out, meet people and find out these stories. Cause I, I'm really interested in narrative and experience too. So the ceramics really has always been this like thread for what reason I couldn't honestly tell you, but I think it goes to what you're saying. Like, it's just so curious to me and it's so it has such a rich history and such um, a continuing history too that it's like this omnipresent magic material to me um so you know spending time <clears throat> as a kid abroad and seeing like oh you know this is also used in different ways and it's it's a curious thing you know like whether it's a technique or a reason that it exists um and yeah, there, there were quite a few as I was thinking and just like reminiscing about these experiences and how they really have all culminated into how I end up here now in Baltimore. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking up a really ridiculous punny question to add to the rapid fire part um, of yeah. this podcast because mm -hmm. um, you know I, I like I like you ceramic folks that talk about yeah you know just you'd get on the wheel. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so having this this strong focus on functional pottery and sculptural like distilled lives mm -hmm. um like in, in drawing inspiration from traditional practices and like everyday objects like what is it that draws you to one object over another like like talk about that and like how do you approach your work and we're definitely going to dive into process in a moment but at least want to like set the stage there yeah i mean um process is a part of it because it's a craft by nature it has such a rich history of function um and culture and society but design as well so it it moves along with the time and really i mean oh my god i'm gonna get real weird and corny too it does mark like history and it marks like our change from agrarian you know into agrarian society so um the way that I'm like, I'm already going off on a tangent. I'm like, refocus. What was the question? Um, Good. <laughs> so like, why am I interested in, in everyday objects? Um, yeah. yeah. So I think for me, the more I went to school, so I did do my undergraduate in ceramics, the more I learned about the history, the more I understood, oh, this is actually incredibly complex. And like I said, tells, um, a story of people like the story of people in my opinion because it involves trade and economics and so many different things um and so for me when i'm thinking about making work i love design um because i'm a tactile person so i'm drawn to these 3d things and it's really neat you know when things are highly functional or work in a certain way and so i get really um jazzed <laughs> for lack of better words <laughs> yeah to be able to be like oh you know we start with this crazy lump of clay that has nothing going on and we have the ability to 
to make it however we want. So like if I want a cup where my hand can fit a certain way or my it's going to touch and feel a certain way or I want it just for hot chocolate, just for that, it's that uniqueness that you can make it really specific or um, sort of a quote unquote like everyday uh, utilitarian thing. Sure. And uh, yeah, so like having the understanding in history and then gaining more knowledge and technique, which is a forever uh, endeavor. Um, I sort of always kind of come back to like the first question you asked. It took me a while to realize like why I was interested in the material. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, because it's potential. It's mm. so much potential, but it's also incredibly understood. It's a common thing. It's democratic we get what a cup is, you know? So I like to use things that like we can all sort of like associate ourselves with. Yeah. Uh, and even though I have tons of whatever going on in this little brain, I can still articulate my emotions and feelings in these things and people can relate to them in their way. So it's sort of, I guess, um, so representative it's abstract because they become like these little codes to me like this is what's going on in my head i don't know if people <laughs> want to dive too deep but that's kind of what happens for me yeah no it's 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 great and as i'm as i'm looking at your shirt you're wearing this sort of lumberjack aesthetic right now which i did <laughs> and it, it reminds me of the um the 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 i did a that, that story I was telling you about before we got started, um, I took this ceramics class and uh, just one of those sort of one day things, team building sort of thing. And any, anytime I make something, I'm like, I know I'm not keeping it because I'm going to give it to somebody. I think it's important to like give gifts. And um, so I gave one to my partner and I kept one for myself. So it's like, whenever you come over here, this is like your shot glass, you know, it's, it's <laughs> red and it's red and black. That's, that's what popped up. And at her place, she has the bowl and that I, that I made. And, um, she was like, yeah, nobody touches that bowl because if they break it, I'm going to be really mad. She was like, this was a gift. You made this with your hands. Yeah. And it's, it's that, it's that sort of dynamic that's there. And what really hit for me is sort of this, I think you were getting at it with this, this sort of notion of you can make it however you want. It's something that's scalable. It's something that, you know, it's like, look, I took this material that, eh, you know, it's the material. It's it's fine. And I was able to make this really cool thing with it. And you're able to use it to drink, to eat from, and all of these different things. And this sort of idea, again, going back to one of the things you touched on, that this idea of the bowl, the bowl, a vessel, is used in so many different cultures for that purpose. So it's just like, it's, it's to an extent, it's something that's relatable in that way. Yeah. And, and like you said, you know, made this. <laughs> <laughs> my hands uh i always say to my students um you know because a lot of people when they start they're like oh clay it's like dirt it's like mud i'm like no clay is clay and actually wrap your mind around this it was a rock that got eroded and turned into this rock paste basically that we reshape and turn back into a rock like what else can do that? No, so you're an alchemist. Huh? So you're an alchemist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think by nature, most ceramic people like are really interested in lighting things on fire. Like, what happens? Um, because this is part of the process. But I nobody's ever said that to me, and I love that. And I think I should put that on a shirt, but I think that's what we are. I think artists are like we're, you know, not always trying to uh, mimic the world out there. We're trying to imbibe it with like your spirit or your joy or or your pain or whatever you know but you can use these materials in a cathartic way or expressive way and yeah i don't know like it's just it's still like amazing to me i just love i like legitimately love talking about it <laughs> I, I i think one of the other things and, and this is a question you don't have but i think i wanted to ask it um i think the, one of the other things that gets inserted in there is one's um like brand awareness that brand of awkwardness of like, oh yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm working with clay and, I, and I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it in this way because I like Salvador Dali or whatever the thing is. And so the question I have is when you think of the term like creativity, right? What's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Like I am kind of going through this book right now about creativity and it's a story about Pixar. And 
the, the, the way they're describing creativity in it is very interesting. At one point, the the the, the author is talking about um, this this story, and the the guy in the story was like, creativity is supposed to hurt. It's, it's, it's a process that you're feeling pain and discomfort, but that's how you get through to keep your process and all of that sort of stuff sorted. And I'd like to like kind of get that sense from you. Like, what is the first thing that comes to mind for you as it relates to your creativity? Hmm. I think um, for me, that's an interesting idea that uh, it's like a a bit of pain. And yeah. I think that's because of uh, the expression of human existence. Ugh, I, I don't even, I was like, don't get deep. Don't do it. No, please, please. But, now, like, we're here for a reason. We have no idea what this is, whatever it is that you believe in. Um, my friend always says to me, if you're here, you're working on something. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea. And I think that art is just another sort of way for us to organize our thoughts in a variety of ways. So I think that creativity for me is like, it's that magical space in between where maybe you're just putting the pencil down and you don't have a plan or you do have a plan, but it is the act. Like it is a verb and it's um, something that is a collaboration between you and the idea. Yeah. Cause the idea is, oh, it's so hard to describe, but I've had so many, you know, people that have really helped me in my journey of being an artist, but I just really think it's like a collaboration. And we as people are also just tools unto the endeavor of expression. Yeah. Um, and so I think about creativity as of this thing that's moving through you, um, but not in a way where it's like a eureka moment all the time. Like it takes the work. You got to put in the practice, um, you know, like whether it's, picking up a pencil every day or wedging your clay. I look to authors a lot because a lot of the authors, they speak about having a discipline or a practice where like I wake up at this time, like 4.30 every morning or 5.30 every morning, and they have a structure that enables them to create. Yeah. So, you know, for me, creativity is, um, you know, it manifests for people in a lot of ways, but I think one of the most useful is when you give it space to to realize itself in a way. Like you need space, a room with a view, as one author would say. But yeah, it takes that time to let it grow. And um, yeah, a, a professor of mine said that, you know, ideas are actual things but they don't exist until you make it like it. Ha it's a tangible thing. It's a real thing. You can have as many of those cool thoughts that you want, but until you do it, yep. it's not real. I've been, I've been really riding that, that wave right there and just trying to fully realize a vision that I have. I li like to keep a notepad with me, jotting down ideas and absolutely and what i can extend from it and also i like this idea this idea that you presented of like we're, we're tools i think you call me a tool so I, thank you <laughs> a little insulting but it's fine um no but yeah it, it, <laughs> but it's i think it's i think it's really important to really think about what our relationship is with creativity you know instead of i'm just making stuff it's like why are you making it and and then you know how do you want to make it what makes this unique but some questions that people may ask you in, in in any goofy interview like this one and <laughs> you know i think it's it's important to really tap back in on occasion and even that sort of comparison of having a a rhythm or having a sort of like setup to be in a position to create mm -hmm. is very similar to at least in my head right now I'm doing this sort of like workout regimen and, you know, you have some goals that you want to do, have you, you're, you're building something, you're sculpting clay. My, my body is clay like, yes, <laughs> a large bowl. There is an wow. artist you dealt specifically with this concept, by the way, I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> and, but, but with it, I'll say there's a regimen that's there where I'm, I know that I'm an individual and it's knowing yourself is knowing how you operate. I know that I'm an individual that, I can get it the later the day goes, the less likely I am to do something in that mm -hmm. event because yeah. it is sort of going through the desert. It is sort of this challenging this. And so when I get up in the morning, you know, kind of like some people say, look, I got to write something, I get these ideas down. 
the same thing for me is like, I need to get to the gym. I need to do something. Otherwise, the likelihood of me doing it is going to be less and less. And then I get on a streak and I don't do it the next day. Oh, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. the same thing goes with this, this, this sort of path where, you know, you, you, I try to podcast pretty regularly. I try to do these interviews pretty regularly and, you know, putting myself in a position to talk, to have a conversation. Cause mm -hmm. sometimes if this is the first thing I did after I woke up, you know, kind of running counter to the, 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 the gym analogy, but if this was the first thing I did when I woke up, I was like, I at least need to talk to the cat, to the refrigerator or something. I can't engage in a conversation with this leftover brain malu from from sleeping. It's like, <laughs> hey, man, ready for the podcast? It's not going to make any sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, you know, giving the space or the time, but also, like you said, like knowing yourself. And I think something that I learned and I'm still always learning and reminding myself is like, you got to trust your instincts too. You know, you're like, why am I attracted to these T-bowls? I sometimes will say, I don't know. I love this stuff so much. I definitely know why I do. It just is going to, you know, you might be there for a while because there's a lot of things that are, you know, involved in it. But, um, you know, having faith in your brain <laughs> um, and who you are, yeah. you know, we're all um, a combination of our experiences and things like that. And, and everybody's, you know, point of view has those nuggets of weirdness, even if they don't like to admit it, mm -hmm. but you know, it makes you human. That's how you know your people. Sometimes it might make a weird wrestling reference. And someone's like, yo, I like that. I was like, you, you didn't think you want to hear a wrestling reference on our podcast. Who knew? Yeah. I I'm all about that. Although sometimes <laughs> my references are starting to get outdated. I'm starting to show my age, but I've even turned into, I'm like, Oh my gosh, is that my mom speaking or is that me? Oh no. Um, okay, you don't know Goonies, but I get you know, I do I feel like watch enough movies and ingest enough pop culture, whether I want to or not. <laughs> um I, I feel like I'm turning into my dad sometimes. I, I say yeah. some things, I'm just like, oh my god, I am not a 68-year-old black man from East Baltimore. <laughs> I am a 38-year-old black man from East Baltimore. Uh so yeah. it's a 30 year age. Yeah, it's different. Um so let's see, in, in terms of because I definitely want to want to get this sort of set up like the stages of the the creative process i say mm -hmm. you, you're going to produce let's say a, a bowl an item whatever the largest scale thing that comes to mind right whatever you've worked on most recently what is kind of like what is sort of the first stage what is somewhere something that's in the middle and what is sort of that last stage when you know that you're you're wrapping up when it comes to your process um that's a great question i but, think that uh i do sort of a pro well a sort of approach there's a lot of crossover between the functional work and and the sculptural work that i do um but i do think they can sort of have a a little bit of a different manifestation in that process um the functional work lately i do um a wood firing technique so i do that with a group of people quite a few times a year um but lately I've also, I work with chefs and make stuff for a restaurant. So that's a really collaborative endeavor. So with that, I always bring actual work when I speak with people. I'm like, here, you need to touch this. You need to look at it, like get a sense. Most of the people that I collaborate with are familiar with my work in one way or another, and they reach out. So I'm working with a chef right now. I bring... Uh, a couple of ideas. So I always start with something that's way off of what they've requested, something that's what I think they're going to request, and then something like somewhere in between. Um, because, uh, you know, words are also symbols. So we're always just, you know, trying to get to that point where we like can settle into like this collaboration of what they're looking for, what I can accomplish for them what I feel comfortable making. Um, and I do, I like to look at objects. I'm always writing down notes. So um, I write down ideas all the time uh, because I also have learned through the years um, that you, you're not going to have enough time to do all of them. And you certainly can't do all of your ideas when they come to you. So just keep them down. Like you said, like keep little journals or notebooks. Um, but yeah, so when I'm starting the functional stuff, I have sort of a repertoire of shapes yeah. that I think represent the work. 
that I like to use because I'm interested in angles and form and things stacking and fitting um, from living in New York City. <laughs> I'm like, so like space is a premium. Tetris. Um, yeah, for sure. And it's also, um, there's something really enjoyable about that organization of the forms for me. So I, you know, I always want to put my point of view on the work and meet the chef collaborator with the what they need the pots to do. Um, so a lot of discussion and and a fair amount of sketching and imagery and then some research because typically they're based on, you know, whether it's a even if it's a contemporary style of cooking, there's something that goes along with it. So I always do some sort of research around the food or the temperature. I just like to have nuggets and inf information that yeah. I can what I tell my students is select from first source documentation and that's what you get your inspiration from. So I try to look at things tangential mm. to the pottery in order to make my pottery. Um, so a lot of times metal forms, glass forms, nature. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so figuring it out what I'm trying to do, uh, doing some research and then, um, and then it's prototyping. So there is always a, second sort of research part i'd say is like the material so I, I feel comfortable making things with this material but there's you know i wouldn't uh like you said wake up and do the podcast like there's that time where you gotta just stretch your hands or your vocal cords or whatever yeah. um and so for me pottery lens and craft lends itself to that quite easily through just the endeavor of doing it. It's like a meditation in, in practice. You're always kind of stretching your mind and your hands to remember these things that you're capable of. Um, and that always lends into the sculpture. So they, they have a the sculpture and the pots have a back and forth. And then I get to work with people in a collaborative way. So everything is kind of swirling and brewing around in this big old stew of ideas. Um, but as far as like knowing when it's complete, so yeah. typically I'll have an order. <laughs> when I'm working with chefs, I'm like, I gotta make these and I gotta make them at this time. So in ceramics, um, I always work backwards. Hmm. What am I anticipating and how can I get to that point? Yeah. yeah. Like that. Deadlines are really crucial, even though, try not to blow them. I don't want to be that artist. Uh, sometimes I make them. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I do my best. Trying I, hard, Tom. I, I, <laughs> I, I know, I know a few who, um, and thank you for that. Uh, and, and I know a few who, uh, don't believe in dead time, de uh, deadlines, dead times. They don't believe in deadlines and they don't believe. Well, I know some. <laughs> just, uh, just a few I've worked with. And like, uh, yeah. so, so, so in balancing like, running a you know ceramics business and being a teacher like i i can see that i would imagine that they like kind of serve each other as far as like you know keeping keeping you always like on your toes and thinking their open minds new folks and you know being able to satisfy yourself by selling your, your your crafts and selling your work and working with clients and such could you speak more on maybe how those experiences like working in both serve you and maybe whether there are some challenges Oh, time. <laughs> time is always the challenge. Um, but I feel incredibly lucky that my job as an educator is about ceramics. Um, I've been teaching art for, for quite a while now. And I just um, started working at Prince George's Community College last semester. And I'm just having a blast because my classes are focused on ceramics, like specifically, which wasn't always been the case, like as an adjunct or whatever it was. I've always had like a multitude of jobs. So I think for me, I sort of like that back and forth. Of course, it can get stressful, but um, I, I just... I love the opportunity to work with people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it's like, uh, I need to like stop. <laughs> but because the business, because I do teach for a living, the business, you know, 
I do make money from that, but it's, there's not quite as much pressure. So I feel like that inadvertently became by design. Um, it's uh, so that they can go back and forth. Um, and time is the thing that gets a <laughs> little kooky, but I do feel so lucky that I really just try to remind myself if I'm having a moment, take a breather and just be like, you know what? Maybe this deadline does need to adjust and you need to have a conversation or maybe you shouldn't sign up for, for this other craft show. So um, having more reasonable expectations with how those two things are going to live in the same person. Because <laughs> um, I am really interested in a lot of things, um, but they do feel so in service of each other at this juncture right now. Um I love the school that I'm at and I, I really like the work that I've been making and I get to talk about them at the same sort of in the same way, in a way. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm very easy to get. Uh, no, that, that absolutely tangent. makes sense. They, 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 they serve each other and, and time is the time is the issue. And it, yeah. I think as we were talking about before we got started, uh, adulting is so hard i relate to that one sister uh <laughs> so let's see i got two more real questions here for you yeah. um before we get to those rapid fire ones because no one escapes the rapid fire questions yes oh my gosh i'm so excited i didn't <laughs> yeah all right okay we'll bring bring the real and and the real <laughs> so could you could you speak on some of the highlights of your your work being out there in the U.S. and internationally? Because you know I've read that you know some of your work and some of your projects have been out there in both. So there's one or two or however many come to mind that really like pop for you that you would want to share. Sure, I think um, most recently with the sculptures sure. being about food. So I also was a waitress, a bartender, a cook, a dishwasher, a manager. I spent a lot of time supporting my academic uh, endeavors, um, working in restaurants and things of that nature. Yeah. So, um, so I, I'm, I got off point that that was relating somehow. Uh, Wait, go back. Ask the question. <laughs> so sundowning. Well, <laughs> you said the sun setting. I'm going with it. Hold on, so, Rob. I'm still here. <laughs> so, 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 speak to us about some of the uh, exhibitions oh, that you've had. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, why did I get on this food tangent? Oh, because uh, in 2019, one that really jumps out is um, I got to do a residency in the south of France, oh, and wow. it's called Air Valerie, and um, I had seen this residency place for quite a while. I think this is like maybe it's 21st year or something. Mm -hmm. And um, I would recently had a little bit of an illness and wasn't doing that grand, but I had already been accepted. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to do it. And it was like one of the best things for me. I met some really incredible people and I got to see food culture. I mean, come on, French. Like, even <laughs> though we know it, when you see it, you're just like, ah. So I spent a lot of time like just kind of like focusing on food and like, ah, oh, food is like the perfect vehicle and metaphor. So when we were there, we had an exhibit at the end of our month residency in this 16th century chapel, you know, as one does. And so really um, putting in that effort and practice, I did a full scale like uh, installation on a table with a lot of objects so it wasn't to me about the objects it's that they became you know this whole tablescape and that really kicked off a lot of what I'm working on now and how I understand the work to be tied together and that hey it's okay to like these things like I had to come to terms with what I was making but so France really sticks out because oh my gosh it's stupid beautiful and the water does literally glitter in the Mediterranean I had no idea um and people are wonderful and right after i finished undergraduate i feel like these experiences where i apply to stuff sometimes you get in things uh, that you just don't expect and other times you're like oh th this will be cool like that that'll be a thing that i can get and i don't get it but 
France was one that I didn't expect. China was another one I didn't expect when I was an undergrad. And so I went and learned about 2000 years of production of porcelain and lived like in a little village and just got to spend a lot of time working with people and, um, you know, speaking through the language of clay because I didn't really speak. I well, really, I don't speak Chinese and they didn't speak English, but we bonded over food and pottery and just like um, hanging out around a fire and drinking baijiu, uh, as you do apparently in Jingdezhen. So France and China, um, and I finished a project last year um, at the Winter Term Museum, which is one of those full circle moments for me. Because again, I, I've mentioned that I've had some really incredible teachers and I had a teacher in high school who took us there on a field trip and they have a soup tureen collection that I adore because it's kind of absurd, but I love it. And so, you know, many moons later, I had applied for a fellowship there. And that's only when I applied after graduate school, like at least 25 years after high school, did I realize, or no, that's an exaggeration. Let's say 20, um, 20 years after high school, did I actually, that's right. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm getting there. I'm on this train. So when I applied and got into there, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the place. I, you know, that I saw in high school and I didn't know where it was. And now I get to do research here. And and I I made a um a sculptural installation, one of these sort of tablescapes uh based on that. And that was up for a year. And that just came down a couple months ago or a year ago. So uh yeah, these like weird sort of first full circle moments and um, you know, whether it's here or around, just getting to make work in these like really cool environments with really cool people too. Well, thank you. That's great. That's great. And actually, I think I can move my final question to kind of lay the shameless plugs portion because it's essentially a shameless plug. Yeah, do it. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what we'll lean into now is the rapid fire questions. And I have five of them for you. Okay. Um, two of them I've made recently because I felt a little trolly. I felt a little trolly. Uh, with me? Uh-huh. I'm oh, good. Specifically for you. Uh, so aside from, you know, teaching, you know, doing mm -hmm. your, 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 your craft, doing your process, what are your favorite hobbies or pastimes? Maybe one or two. Sure. Um, I have a little garden here. So I have a little, I was just out there this morning, actually. Um, so a little vegetable garden and there's quite a few flowers around here. So I like to like literally get my hands in dirt. Um, that's fun. I've been trying to do some printmaking or just like block carving shall we say i don't want to make it seem like something it is not but i'm interested in um reproducing imagery because what i do is not in that way so that's been like every time i make a print i'm like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> um so yeah and i i do love to cook so i got the crack pot on right now um so cooking is like edible sculpture so love it love it yeah, I, I made some um some mushroom and black bean burgers before. Right. So I'm, I'm looking at the plate right now. I got these Hello Fresh. They're not paying me, but I got these these boxes from them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, trying out different things, mostly vegetarian stuff. Occasionally, I'll have some chicken in there, but usually uh, vegetarian stuff. And yeah, it's I think it's untapped because I'm a person that loves to cook, but I'm so busy. It, yeah. This feels like a commercial, uh, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely been effective. A lot of cutting, though, a lot of chopping, and I'm like, come on, guys, can we? Can you just pre-cut it? I'm a civilized. No, it's food is about the prep. So, like, I've discovered that I love cooking. Same, it's hard to find the time, yeah. so I tend to do sometimes bigger batches, and then mm -hmm. I'll have uh stuff that i'll put it in the freezer because i use i don't want to eat all of the same thing so at least there's like oh when i don't feel like cooking i can grab something this is all theory too so i'm saying this out loud because i'd like to <laughs> work harder not not or no it goes the other way ah smarter not harder anyhow. Yep, i was waiting for you to correct that uh <laughs> if you could travel anywhere in the world someplace you haven't been by the way uh where would it be oh my god easter island Okay. Give me those sculptures. 
um, when we moved to our apartment, I found this little sculpture, this little wooden thing. And I was like, what is this? This is so crazy. And I like think brought it to a teacher or something. And, you know, they found these sculptures and then found out later that they're actually massive. And so, yeah, I've never been there and it's a mystery. So I'm curious. Um, so I got, let's see, uh, what is your favorite movie, TV show or book? Ugh. I feel like, oh, this one, I'm not a poser. It is Dune. Um, my grandfather was an avid reader. Okay. Um, and so ah, it's so weird to say that. It's like when your band gets big, you know? But um, my grandfather was an avid reader and he always gave us books. And uh, Dune is one of those that made no possible sense for me to read as a youth. The film no reason why I should have been watching that. Um, but it just left an impression because Dave Lynch is a freak and I love it. So yeah. And I share a birthday, by the way. Oh, amazing. Um, and Ratatouille. So that I think that tells you a lot about me. <laughs> okay. You, you're gonna like these next two rap these next two trolley. These are the trolley ones. Oh good. So um, one of the terms used in the ceramics world is the wheel, what have you. So for you, um, what do you prefer? The Wheel of Time or Wheel of Fortune? Uh, oh my uh, gosh, I guess Wheel of Fortune, because I was just talking about my grandpa, and we used to watch Jeopardy and then that, and he would be like, this show is so dumb, but we watch it. So. It, it goes from the intellectual stuff with Jeopardy, yeah, with Jeopardy to, yeah, man, I came here from Mississippi, not just besmirch anyone from Mississippi, but it's not a lot of... <laughs> or he just like, it's this, like he could always guess them, because he read so much. Yeah. I, it, I kind of feel the same way about like, um, family Feud. When <laughs> like, come on, guys, you you pulled how many people? It's um pretty yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty like, lot. We, <laughs> we definitely went through a. We used to watch Family Feud at night, like they have like a. I guess when you turn the TV on, it's just like a slew of them together, yeah. like clips or whatever. Uh, yeah, pretty funny, but yeah, I get it. So this is the last one. This is the one I'm most proud of. Uh. Because it, it because it's a name thing and it mm. relates back to ceramics, it relates to clay specifically. Andrew Dice Clay or Clay Aiken. Ah. I just dropped a mic when I said that, by the way. Ooh. Oh my gosh. It's visceral for both. I don't, you know, have a thing about either. I guess Clay Aiken, to be honest, because Andrew Dice Clay is so dirty. He's just <laughs> he's true. just, you know, he has I haven't seen him around in a minute, but I do remember he was pretty around making the rounds when i was probably i don't know teenager or early 20s and i was just like oh you're dirty the last thing i seen him in was uh a star is born he played lady gaga's dad in that movie oh really oh yeah. and uh it's uh you still him though you know <laughs> yeah i feel really corny saying clay Aiken, but i i just i don't know <laughs> yeah, i'm fine i'm fine with Andrew dice clay <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this this interview and um i want to open it up one i want to thank you for being on this this chat um and indulging the rapid fire questions they're always right. they're yeah. always out there and uh so finally i, I want to really open it up and give you the space to um you know tell folks how they can get involved how they can uh, support your work and where they can check you out all that good stuff it's shameless plug time the floor is yours oh my gosh i wasn't ready to shamelessly plug myself but okay <laughs> um so I have a a really fun, slightly outdated website, but it's um <laughs> as I need an assistant. I'll shamelessly plug that I'll be hiring an assistant soon. Um so it's Heos Ceramics. So my name's Heather Sandin Chapman. But um when I did a craft show one time, it was like first two letters of your first name, first two of your last name. Thus Heos was born. Um, because it also means change, apparently. And that's what I thought I could be wrong. Um, so heoceramics.com. Let's see, up and coming. Oof, I know there is, but I put on my list of things to plug was this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I am working with um, three restaurants right now, um, two that will be opening in Philadelphia um, soon. One is called Donk Bar with uh, John Carl Lockman of uh, Winkle and Nord in its previous incarnation. So he's an awesome dude, Philly slash Dutch dude. It's a great combo. And so I've been collaborating with them 
they're they just opened last week so the new pots will hit uh in a few weeks i'm also working with ember and ash um and uh making some new work for them and they are also located in philadelphia one is a secret uh, <laughs> and the other is hopefully in virginia so that's kind of really kept me busy lately um and then i also work in the summer i hope to be working on a new project with um the I want to say this right. It's, it's Henry Mercer's tile company, um, known as Moravian Tile Works, previously in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, now is the Tile Works of Bucks County. And so they've been um, carrying some of my wood fired ware in their gift shop. Yeah. And we've been talking about working on a new installation, focusing on research of um, Henry Mercer and the um craft movement and the region so yeah and that i i also teach full time i totally love <laughs> my job here at prince george's community college and um working with the students is just my second semester there but i'm so proud of them i will shamelessly promote the clay club at pgcc and you can find them on instagram mm -hmm. i also have an instagram it's heo ceramics um as well and there you have it folks i want to again thank heather austin and chapman for coming into the podcast Heo Ceramics, Heo Ceramics, and I am Rob Lee saying that there's art and culture in and around your neck of the woods. You just got to look for it.